Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. We are finally going for our what? Our first full week in September already. And it is, I don't know, where you're at, the seasons are totally different, right? We're, we're like kind of opposite. Um, yeah. But right now in Florida, it is burning up. The humidity is horrible today. So if you are into science, technology, engineering, art makers, any of that sort, if you can do something with weather, please feel free to work on, on Florida because it is way too hot. And if you're a scientist in the meteorology, you know, fields, please try to invent something to cool us off besides, of course, the air conditioner and to make uh, Robert feel a little more comfortable in his freezing weather as well. I think, uh, uh, was, was it Monday night? We had our, our steam talk or our stream with the steam yeah. dragons, right? And when you came on backstage, you had a blanket wrapped around you. I think you had like a little hoodie or something like that. I don't know it what was you very cold. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I was burning up <laughs> and you were totally <laughs> freezing. It was total yeah. opposite. It is yeah. so funny how that works. And it's weird because you're in autumn, in fall, and and we are we literally had our first of spring on the first of September. So yeah. it's it's quite quite strange, you know. Us supposed to have um, warm weather, and you are supposed to having cold weather, and it's completely opposite. <laughs> right, right, and that's a really great topic when you're talking about science. Right, is how um, you know the weather affects you know above and below the equator and yeah. around the world, <laughs> and uh, why those those things happen so we'll definitely have to touch up on weather basics um yeah. here sometime on steam talk 101 robert That's so <sighs> <laughs> we didn't have a show last week no i think it, it was so crazy and and speaking of weather i mean with hurricanes and tornadoes in in your area <laughs> there was no way you were going to set up your laptop in in the crazy <laughs> uh, i mean environment that you were trying to get everything hold everything together so right. that's why we we weren't here last week <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you what it was hectic last week here in florida if you are unfamiliar with what happened we had um hurricane idalia or something like that come through yeah. i don't know where they get these names for these these yeah. four hurricanes right because yeah. i'm like who i when i first heard the name idalia i was like i was thinking <laughs> vidalia onion you know <laughs> it's got layers <laughs> yeah but i want to ask you why do they all have female names is there something <laughs> that i don't you know, know we could really we could really get into that because because <laughs> weather is like a female right she, okay. like her moods are like tragic yeah. no judgment at all it's you no, know no, it's, no. it's just an observation <laughs> <laughs> it is very funny i you know it's mm. it's I, I that's how i relate it because yeah. um you know it, it can change so drastically like uh, when i lived in arkansas that we had tornadoes and yeah. I fear tornadoes more than I do hurricanes. Here in Florida, for me, hurricanes, I'm like, yes, it can get terrible. I've lived here when I was seven years old, and I do remember flooding coming through my car, right? But in a tornado, it drops mm -hmm. on you anywhere, anytime. It can wow. completely change shifts, like at an instant. And there is really, unless you have your house completely set up, yeah. and you know where to go and uh you it's just an absolute disaster and i've seen yeah. some horrible things when i lived in arkansas to our house to friends homes um and so it's i fear tornadoes more than i do hurricanes yeah. absolutely yeah. Uh, just i think the uh, last year this time also you guys were also experiencing like hurricane winds and things like that mm -hmm. and um you know often that i think like how do because sometimes like the the news reporters they send out a warning like days or sometimes a week before the time then they know yeah. and i actually watched a, a a clip it was like a news clip where um the people ignored the the whole thing and then you know it was this huge catastrophe that i'm like thinking right. But why do you not heed the warnings? Like, get yeah. out, <laughs> you know, that type of thing. <laughs> so it's, you know, I'm like thinking, yeah. like, you, then you, and, and I'm a very sympathetic person because initially I thought, you know, oh, the poor people had no warning and all that. Then later on, I noticed in the comments, okay, they've ignored the warnings for like a week and then yeah. they just decided, no, we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> 
quite often. Um, I think it re usually happens to a lot of people who have been in areas for so long and they've been warned for so often that in things didn't happen. Um, okay. you know, so you, you get to the point where you're kind of like, they've said this so many times and we all know media yeah. can exaggerate things, right? They really do to, to fear, to put a fear in you. So I think Thank a lot you. of times that people, they, they kind of just take it as a grain of salt, especially when you've been in an area for so long. However, mm -hmm. I really see your point as well, because mm -hmm. my son's a firefighter and okay. we've had flooding so bad in Pennsylvania to a point yeah. where we put signs up they blocked off the road and they and my son was literally standing there as a firefighter mm -hmm. so, you know saying don't go this way it is very it is flooded and it's yeah. really bad and people will literally drive around the firefighters and yeah. around the podiums and around the barricades and go through the because it's quicker to get to wherever they need to go and then they end up getting stuck yeah. And they sit, and then I'm thinking, now you put my son's life in danger because of your stupidity. I don't yeah. understand that. And I would never want to, nobody would want to lose their, their child over some stupid idiot that doesn't pay attention. So yeah. I completely see where you're coming from. And okay. I'm the same way. Yeah. I, I yeah. get out. I don't, other people, you know, sometimes I think nature just needs to take its course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but but oh speaking of natural disaster, it's, it's it actually it actually joins in so much with our topic today. Are oh, you know if if you're watching, are you a natural disaster in the kitchen or, <laughs> or an expert? <laughs> okay, it's my that's my clue to go. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. I am a tornado in oh, the kitchen. It is horrible, um, Robert. I, you know, you when you come to visit, yeah. I'm excited because you and Alex are and CJ, the three of you are amazing cooks, right? And awesome. you're you're really and I cannot wait because I'm just going to be in my glory. But if for me, <laughs> it's funny because my kids will look at the food and go, "Were you playing a video game while you were cooking?" <laughs> 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 that is quite hectic. Have you, so, seen, I need to, mm, have you seen the movie? Um, oh, what is it? The one with the VR on it and uh, player re Ready Player One? Yes, I did. Okay. I did. Do you remember that scene where the mom's on the VR and in the kitchen mm -hmm. it's burning? <laughs> I remember something like that. <laughs> they, so, all, my, but, all my kids were like, it's me. <laughs> But but Kat, if when you are in the kitchen, mm -hmm. do you tend to like stockpile the dishes, or do you like work with something, wash it up, put it away, do the next thing, wash it up, pack it away, or does it just pile up, and and then it goes to the dishwasher or something? Like what is your 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 routine? My strategy. When you go? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm I have OCD. So okay. yeah, so I cannot deal with with messes around me. So that's probably why I burn my food because <laughs> I'm too busy doing the dishes. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I literally, if I'm in the kitchen, Robert, I have to have somebody cooking with me and then I can clean up at the same time. Okay. Yeah. So it kind of works like that. But if you're a, a chef, right? Yeah. You already have a team that's, that's doing true. this. So <laughs> it's so much easier when you have someone behind you to do yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, we actually have a professional chef in, in the in the chat today. So that's quite cool to see to see him there as well. So you'll probably throw some comments every now and then. With my thing, yeah. it's it 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 ranges. So it, it depends who takes lead in the kitchen. Yeah, I can be okay. a good support. But yeah. if I'm supposed to be doing everything, then it's like, you know, get out of the kitchen for now. I've got my own plan. It's like if oh, I, I give them duties. Okay, you can you can um, set the table. You can put some glasses, get the serviettes ready or stuff like to get them out of the kitchen so I can carry on with my business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're one of those type chefs. Yeah. <laughs> If you are in the audience and you are and you enjoy cooking, um, maybe you can relate to our topic today. You can give us some pointers or uh, maybe you can uh, kind of chime in on the, the topics that we have in some of the videos that we have. Today, we're talking about the art 
and science of cooking. And I love this because a lot of people misunderstand that cooking really is a combination of science and art. And when we say this as art, I look at it like why adding the A to STEM, right? Yeah. So we add the A to STEM because art is a part of science, technology, engineering and math. Right. Mm -hmm. We have to have all of that together. And I'm a very big advocate with having art added into that. So that's why we do steam instead of STEM. And so cooking, the topic where we are going to discuss today is really everything wrapped up in one when it comes to steam. And so I am now, again, I watch, you watch like um, Gordon Ramsay, of course, that name floats around everywhere. We watch those things and we see the chef in the, in the kitchen, he starts yelling at everybody. And for me, I would probably cry and I would just stand there <laughs> and cry. That That's me. But he really is a very gentle chef you know mm-hmm. behind the scenes i hear he's a very gentle chef and his wife even says look he's so sweet and people are so afraid <laughs> of him because of you know seeing him on on you know the the television yeah. but for you do you because you said you're a very like you know get out of my way i know mm-hmm. what i'm doing i have plans <laughs> are you a gordon ramsay behind the scenes or a gordon ramsay in front of the camera um, I, I I wouldn't say I'm a I'm a Gordon Ramsay though, but I do get fr- I never get I never get angry, but I get frustrated because there's like certain things, and as soon as you have someone else in the kitchen, and I'm supposed to like execute my things if I have the potatoes on the the stove and I have something in the oven, so I do a multitask. So while the kettle is boiling, I'm busy cooking the potatoes and the onions are already in the pan, so I kind of do mm-hmm. everything at the same time because I, I want the food to be hot when I serve everything. You don't want cold potatoes and uh, you know meat burning your 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 palate, you know, when you go. So so that's the, the type of thing. So in, in my sense, it's just to kind of, you know, I can have a conversation if someone is just there to keep me company in the kitchen. And that's perfect. Right. They can talk. And then sometimes they'll say, okay, just give me a second. Let me just focus on this quickly. <laughs> you know, the onions are burning. Let me just do this. Or um yeah, and, and and I think people shouldn't comment on my cooking <laughs> while I'm busy with it. So like, why why would you do this? I would have done it differently. And then it's like, you know what? Um, mm-hmm. you make yourself a cup of coffee and I'll join you just now. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think I can relate to that, especially mm-hmm. as a streamer. And for those of you in the audience as streamers, I think you can relate to backseat drivers who are, yeah. you know, trying to tell you how to do it. Because I can't stand people coming to my stream and tell me how to game. You know what I mean? Why did you go that way? You're supposed to go the other way. So yeah. I can imagine not having that in the so, kitchen. But on the other side, if I'm in, in the support mechanism, then I also feel like, you know, I'm standing around doing nothing that I want to help. Then I'll yeah. usually ask, like, are you a person who only wants one person in the kitchen? Or is there anything that I can help with? <laughs> you right. know, then I'll say, do you want me to set the table? Is there anything? And if they say, no, no, I've got this, then I'll leave them. Then I'll go pour myself a cool drink or something. And I'll just stand on the side and talk. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when we talk about cooking, we talk about the science and the art of it. And there's nobody that knows the art of cooking better than Walter White. (laughs) No, this is a volumetric flask. You wouldn't cook in one of these. Uh, Yeah, I do. Uh, No, you don't. Volumetric flask is for general mixing and titration. You wouldn't apply heat to a volumetric flask. That's what a boiling flask is for. Did you learn nothing from my chemistry class? No. You flunked me. Remember? No wonder. Prick. And let me tell you something else. (laughs) (laughs) No, you flunked me. (laughs) Oh, my word. (laughs) I don't think that's how cooking really worked. (laughs) No. no. (laughs) That's not the kind of cooking we're talking about today, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) But... Again, it obviously is a science and it is an art. And yes, you do have to know the type of equipment that you use, right? Because it's very important uh, in order to use the proper measurements. Again, we're talking math. You have to know a little bit of basic math. Um, And then, of course, you have to know what type of pot to use or a pan. And here's another thing. Robert, a lot of people don't understand this. There is a difference between a pot and a pan. 
<laughs> so it, it, you know, it really does make a big difference. But here is someone who actually knows what they're doing when it comes to cooking. Awesome. This week, we're gonna study the physics of baking. Baking has arisen already on several occasions in this course, but so far we haven't been able to actually go into the physics of baking. That is, how do recipes for baked goods work and produce the delicious outcomes that we all so much enjoy? And the reason for that, the reason that we haven't discussed baking as of yet, is that as you will see this week, um, the physics of baking involves many, in fact, if not most of the ideas that we've discussed up until this point. Baking involves elasticity, viscosity, emulsions, heat transfer, transfer, um, solubility, many concepts like that. And this week we're going to go um, through what is going to be on one hand a bit of a, a review of the concepts that we've discussed up until this point. And on the other hand, we're going to show you how these ideas apply to baking. So before we begin, I just want to give one caveat. We are not professional bakers. We are scientists. And our intent in this week's dis baking discussion is not to basically go through every method and every technique that is required to basically make a baked good delicious. What we're going to do is to expose the basic scientific issues that underlie baking. And by putting them together in your own mind, they will hopefully help you make sense of recipes. And to help us with this, we're very fortunate to be able to visit the kitchen of Joanne Chang, a flour bakery. Hi, I'm Joanne Chang of Flour Bakery. I'm gonna be showing you today how to make yellow birthday cake and talking to you about all of the science behind making birthday cake. So first, let me show you all the ingredients we have for a yellow birthday cake. We have unsalted butter, granulated sugar, we have eggs and egg yolks, and there's a little bit of vanilla in here as well. We also have some buttermilk, and then our dry ingredients, which are flour. And then in this container are combined baking soda, baking powder, and kosher salt. Okay, the first thing I do is I'm gonna put the butter into a mixer. You could do this by hand, but I promise you after about 10 minutes, your arms will be really tired. So if you can, do it in a mixer. Now, one of the things that's important about the butter is that we want it to be at room temperature. Now, why is it important that the butter is at room temperature? Because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding millions and millions of minuscule microscopic air pockets into the butter. And we're gonna do that with our sugar. If you imagine sugar, it's, a, it's an actual crystal, right? Sugar is a, is a crystal. And the crystalline structure of the sugar, what it does is it acts as tiny little shovels into the butter and it digs all of these little holes and makes little minuscule pockets of air. If the butter's too cold, then the, sh the sugar can't do its work. The shovels just aren't strong enough. So you wanna make sure you start off with room temperature butter. I'm gonna slowly start adding the sugar. And as I'm doing this, the butter is slowly starting to get more and more uh, Works, worked up. And I'm gonna show this to you once all of the butter gets, gets put in. Now, why is it so important that I have all of these air pockets? So if you imagine what you want for the ideal birthday cake, you want something that's nice and light and fluffy and tender and velvety. And the last thing in the world you want is a really tough, hard to eat, chewy cake. So what we try to do in the making of the cake is create as many opportunities as possible for science to do its magic and take all of these ingredients and turn them into something light and fluffy and delicious. So when I talk about the sugar creating air pockets into the butter, later on when I actually added all of these ingredients to the cake batter and I put that batter into the oven, all of those pockets of air will expand in the oven once they get into the heat of the oven. And that is what's gonna help cause some of the rise of the cake. And the rise of the cake is what's gonna make the cake really light and fluffy instead of heavy and dense. That is so cool. Um, I think just the different techniques that they use with uh, the, you know, making the cake light and airy. I also know that sometimes they use carbonated water to kind of have the bubbles in there to also keep the, the, the cake um, 
light and fluffy in that sense instead of like using like heavy creams or, or milk to to make it like really dense and and, and thick <laughs> I have, I, yeah, I've been baked. I love baking cakes. Okay. Let me put it this way. I love baking. And again, mm-hmm. here's the difference. There's a difference between cooking and baking. Yeah. And so I like baking more than I do cooking. Okay. Um, you know, and, and it's, and truly I just feel, and maybe, you know, this is, maybe this is why a lot of people don't like to cook. Um, mm-hmm. And for those of you who are chefs in our audience, maybe you can kind of give us some ideas and tips on, on, if this, if there's a better way to do this, but yeah. I think cooking for me is more involved. Like there's so much more I have to do and so many things I have to keep an eye on at the same time than I do if I were to bake. So for instance, let's take it to this way. If I were to bake the cake, I put the ingredients together and then I bake, you know, I, I put it all together and then I am done. Right. But with cooking, it's like, okay, now I have to do the chicken and then I have to make sure this is, and I have to do the vegetables over here. And then I have to do the egg over here, make sure this is, and I feel like I'm doing, I guess, a hundred different things at once. (laughs) What is your thought on that? I'm the opposite. Uh, You know, because the thing is like with, with cooking, you know, you'll have like four or five opportunities of success you know at least okay the onion's done i've got the french fries sorted i've got the sauce all of this and uh, it's just to brown the meat or that type of thing with a cake <laughs> i'll be so scared did i remember to put the sugar inside you know did i put this at the right time did i was i supposed to put in the whole egg or was it supposed to separate it fluff the egg uh-huh. first and then you know when they say you're, um, that you have to preheat the oven up to certain degrees now i'm thinking like how long do I preheat the oven for? <laughs> you know, is, it, is it five minutes or should I just feel on the side? And then once you put the cake in there, you leave it. And then I'm like, okay, there's only yeah, at the last 10 minutes or five minutes, you can only open it. Otherwise, because of the, the cool air, the cake will fall. Like it, it will make a hole in the, in the middle where it actually falls flat. So I'll be stressed out the whole 45 minutes of, of the baking process. <laughs> so if it's like little things at a time, even when I, when I, when I, when I cook and, um, Say for instance, if it's an oven baked dish and it's with potatoes, I'll boil the potatoes, like parboil them, and then I'll have later put it into the oven pan with, with the meat and the onions and the vegetables. Because I know, like, the worst thing is to have hard potatoes. And once you have the sauces and everything going, there's no way of getting the, the potatoes soft. Otherwise, the, the, the meat's going to burn. And then it's just, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's st- stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Stressful. Here's a great tip from one someone in our audience, right? So um, preheat is because you need to get the oven to a temperature before you can bake a dish. Oh, okay. So, um, and I love. I think that's a great idea. I think you should always preheat <laughs> before you do because if I didn't preheat, and I think that's a really important step, right, in in this whole process to preheat before because imagine putting everything together. And then being like, oops, I forgot to put the oven on. And now I have to wait, you know. And yeah. I think we're very, I think food in itself is very delicate. It can't just sit and mm-hmm. wait. It has to be, you know, done like immediately and, and, and put it, especially if you're baking, it has to be put yeah. in there or you're not going to get that light and fluffy, uh, you know, airy type um, yeah. outcome. Um, so that's, that's very, very important. Thank you very yeah, much or, for that tip. Yeah. Or it doesn't have the even heat distribution, you know, then it's, then it's like, it's, it's raw on the inside and burns on the other side. <laughs> I always, that's yeah, it's, it's, that's it's me on a typical terror. cooking day. <laughs> <laughs> but there's so many things, you know, in the sense of with cooking, that that is a science. Um, did you know that there's a difference between like dry cooking and wet cooking, like in like the preparation of food? Now, wow. if you would look at oil, if you use oil, would you say that is dry or wet? I would say it was wet. It's actually dry. So wow. because of, if, if, if you cook with water or with steam, then it has that. So now what the oil does, it, it actually dehydrates instead of. You know, so that's why a person adds a little bit of water to the mix to kind of keep the 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 um, either the vegetables the or the um, the the food soft on the inside instead of it burning. Because otherwise, you if you fry, it's actually like a dry dry heat that you add to it. So anything um, other than water would be dry in that sense. So if you flame grill 
or use oil then then it's as a as a dry preparation oh my gosh it is i didn't even know see this is why i shouldn't cook <laughs> <laughs> You know, and it's funny because my son, again, like I said, my son was a firefighter. So when I'm cooking and, you know, say like we have an oil fire or something, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, let's just put water on it. And he's like, no. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I'm I admit I'm not a bad cook, but I have a sign in my kitchen that says I can cook. I just choose not to. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay because yeah. we, you know, between you and I, like you and Alex and CJ, yeah. um, and even in our audience, our, our wonderful chef in the audience, um, are males, right? Yeah. And <laughs> you cook, and mm -hmm. they all we always had the stigma that women were in the kitchen and they cooked, and men, you know, didn't get in the kitchen and they worked on cars and all that other stuff, but it's a totally new world. And, yeah. you know, and it's for everybody. And I think that this alone goes to show that psh, I'm not ashamed. If you want to yeah. get in the kitchen, Robert, and go cook, <laughs> go for it. fine with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's, I, I think it's, it really is great um, yeah. that, that we, we kind of moved away from that stigma of being in the kitchen type, you yeah. know, category. If you had to move into a new house and it's like fully furnished and like the whole kitchen is sorted and, and you've got everything, what one item would you need in that kitchen? That's like, it's a non-negotiable, I need this in the kitchen. What would you say? Hmm, that's a tough one. <laughs> okay, repeat it again. Okay, so if you had like a, a kitchen utensil or yeah. a, a gadget or something, okay, um, what would you not want to go without? If you had to, you know, you can go without a stove, you can go without this or that, but that one thing that you mm -hmm. need. If you want some more time, I can tell you what yeah. I want. <laughs> I, um, yeah, go ahead. Tell me what you want. Okay, so a pressure cooker. I think this is the oh. best thing because the thing is i think like well, you know what i struggle with is actually to get meat to be nice mm -hmm. and soft and that mm -hmm. it's a process and i'm so scared that when you when you dry cook you know with oil and all that that you actually burn the meat on the outside then it ends up being tough yeah but now you just add a little bit of water put it in brown the meat and you put it in the pressure cooker and you close yeah. it <laughs> yes and it actually makes it so soft, soft. I, i'll cook anything so it's actually in a pot so I'll yeah put it in the pressure cooker <laughs> pressure cooker is a good one and that goes along with like i like my um um crock pot you yes. know that you just throw i do a lot of um pork loins in there oh, wow. i throw those in and i just and i put potatoes and onions and and i and i can put it on low like first yeah. thing in the morning and you can do this if you are if you go to work all day yeah. you put this on low you put all the stuff in before you leave for work and just let it simmer for just and, and it's low okay so you're yeah. not putting it leaving it high by the time you get home it's done and it's so soft and tender and it's very good. I know my friend Serena does this all the time and she's a gamer. So okay. she's like my, her and I were like, we were on World of Warcraft more than any other guy that was in our, so they would be like, how are you, you guys, you know, having such great meals and eating, you know, and watching World or playing World of Warcraft at the same time. It's because we put it in the, the crock pot or your pressure cooker, yeah. whichever one, and then you come home and you're, you're all set. You're ready to sit down in front of that, that game and play. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to start experimenting with the, with the, uh, I think the crock pot is like a slow cooker. Uh, it is. Uh, it's probably, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So that's, yeah. So it's, it's, it's like you say, if you go to, you know, if you are a working person and you just set everything up and you do your thing and you get home mm -hmm. from work, then your dinner is sorted. That is so cool. right. <laughs> do you feel in, okay. So mine would be, um, and this is going to sound funny. Mine would be my timer. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> because I, I wouldn't, I don't know when, like I get so distracted sometimes, mm. or I don't know when that exact time. And I get so nervous. Like I've had times, this is no lie. And you, you might laugh Thanksgiving day. Yeah. I, we put the Turkey in the oven broke uh -huh. while it was halfway done. So we never got the, the time didn't go off. The little timer thing didn't go off on the yeah. oven. And so we didn't even know by the time we went to take it out or even check on it as we were, 
it looked like it was so bad and we had so many people coming over and it was just absolutely horrible um yeah. so yeah my timer is very important i have to make sure i have a separate oh. timer then on my yeah, stove I've, what i do is i ask my my little friend <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so i don't i don't want to mention siri's name otherwise she's going to pop up <laughs> 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 And usually I just say like said something for 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something just to to kind of and then I still beep I still open the pot and just to see if everything like if it's there if it needs more water or something so right. I don't trust myself but you know, I think that's a good combination though right we had we actually had on one of our other shows um mm -hmm. uh last year no the year year before I think it was like a couple years ago um we had uh we had another camera and we were in the kitchen behind the scenes and I was actually cooking egg rolls while Jared and Andrew were watching because we were talking about nutrition yeah and the two of them just sat through the whole thing drooling <laughs> <laughs> and you could hear it now if you are into ASMR that the sound of cooking oh oh is just insane and so yeah. you know I'm cooking and talking and they were just like drooling and the fact of the matter is after, and this is where the art portion of this comes in, right? Having it on a nice plate, delicately staged, makes it all the better. Yeah. It's just one of those times where, you know, food, you take your time with food. Yeah. It, you really, really have to. Um, yeah. It is very much the presentation also. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So do you do presentation, Robert? Are you big on featuring your, when you do food, when you bake something or cook something, are you all about presenting the art? I, think, I think with just, just in the whole cooking process, I don't necessarily like make flowers out of cauliflower or those type of things, but I think the, the colors that I use in the cooking also make sense. Like obviously you have the, the dark brown of the meat and then you want something red something orange something green so in that sense the color palette needs to work mm -hmm. for me um, right if i make desserts it's a different story then i, I love doing layers something like a um if it's like a tiramisu or a um uh, uh there's always the uh, and i can't think of the name of it it's like a trifle mm -hmm. so if it's also in in layers and um you know then the decoration or the different things i like um, things to collaborate in a way. So for okay. instance, if I had to do a meal and I would use something throughout. So for instance, if mm -hmm. I used cherry, like a cherry would be in the dessert, it would be in the main meal and maybe even as, as, as the starter. There'd be something that, that has that flavor carrying through, but then you have the sweetness or the sourness or, you know, that will carry out like with your, your starter would be something different. Or even right. if it's just like a, a certain nut or if i use peanuts in in the preparation like for the hors d'oeuvres then um, i'll have that on the trifle at the end or something like that or even macadamia nuts it actually mm -hmm. reminds me of, of a dish that i made with that where i um it was like french loaves that i just like slithered and i had like a, a pesto that i that i put on on the bread and was with macadamia nuts and i did that in the oven with some cheese it was really nice and the main meal I need to remember, I can't remember what I did for the main, but for the dessert, I actually had like a, a cherry trifle. And instead of using peanuts or mixed nuts, I actually used macadamia nuts to, to decorate. But it was a chocolate cherry one. So it was dark chocolate with with the cherry, um, I think it was like a cherry liqueur or something that I actually put into the into the, the mixture of fruit. So that, that actually wow. really came out. Nice. <laughs> wow, that is making me hungry. Thanks. <laughs> thing and it's like early in the morning here and i i want cake you, go. you know <laughs> have you you know what i have you have you seen that one uh what was it bill cosby he used to say dad is great he gives us chocolate cake early in the morning <laughs> when cereal's supposed to bake <laughs> That's so, funny. <laughs> so hey if you want yeah. chocolate cake in the morning, go for it. Because Tell is, yes, Tell is very good at, at doing that. <laughs> so you know what, Robert, you make a good point. That color, mm. choosing foods with other elements um, that add color yeah. uh, is, is, is very important, 
right? When yeah. we talk about the art of cooking, yeah. it creates a, a subtle contrast um, in kind of like a visual harmony, right? Yeah. So, you know, when we look at anything, um, the first thing we look at, and even if it's in, in comparatively, even if it's people, when we look, the the visuals are your first impression. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, when you go to apply for a job, the mm -hmm. first thing that they see is is how you're dressed. You know, what colors are you wearing when you go yeah. for a job? Right. Because color tells a lot about you. Sometimes color um, in jobs. If you wear red, it's bold. It means you're very, yeah. you know, risque and you're very, you know, you, you take charge. And and then, yeah. you know, certain other things like blue is more of an honorable, subtle type color. But so if you mix that with with foods, it's the same thing. People yeah. will look at it and go, "Ooh, that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. I don't know if I want to try that. That doesn't look appetizing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or if it looks good, sometimes you'll get the reaction where it's like, I don't even want to eat this. It looks yeah. so good. I yeah. don't want to mess it up. Yeah. It's it's so Yeah. <laughs> Am I right? Just I've, I've I've had my moments of cooking where it's like Okay, don't look at it. Just eat. It's going to taste good. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like everything in one pot. It's got everything that you need. Just eat. Or that I'll just dash some cheese over it. To make right. It a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you are into that color theory as a, uh, you know, as a, a chef or let's say an aspiring chef, mm. um, you know, it's very important to know which colors go together and which don't. It's like, it's like an interior designer mm. for food. So for instance, yellow bananas compare well with orange type, uh, hued fruits, like a darker type orange. Mm -hmm. um, chocolate cake is appealing when combined with like the browns of, of coffee, like coffee, mm. uh, a light coffee look. Um, and even the way you de decorate how you're going to present it, like a blue plate can be a nice backdrop for um, accenting leafy greens. So it's very important that art is a part of this. Um, I'm a huge fan of the art aspect. Now, mm -hmm. the the part that you're good at, which is like, you know, the, the cooking itself, the measurements and the, you know, putting it all together. That is obviously very important. Taste is very, very important. But I think we, you and I would pair well where you cook it and I'll decorate it. <laughs> both eat it. <laughs> yes, and we'll both eat it. <laughs> so um, I don't know. Have you ever thought about being a, a chef? I actually did when when I was in in high school. That was actually the one thing that I wanted to go because I used to work at a fast food restaurant. Um, mm -hmm. I used to work with a colonel, and uh, I actually worked there for ten years during my uh, some of my school years, and then afterwards. So that was, I thought that was going to be my career, and then I realized, you know what, I don't wake up in the morning three o'clock to wash dishes. So that, you know, <laughs> washing dishes and and hosting people in that sense, it also comes with the territory. Not that I, mm -hmm. I'm like. Um, I'm afraid of people, but yeah. I'm not always the one who would, who would like washing the dishes, though. <laughs> so, right. But it's, right. it, it comes with the territory. But right. definitely, Chef, uh, there's we actually have a, a very nice um, place, Chef School in, in Cape Town, um, called Speed. S-P-I-E-R. And they Ooh. also well known for their wineries and things like that. But it's super expensive. So I thought, you know, I'm not going to put my parents through that to to make them pay for so much. And then I don't want to help them in the kitchen with the washing machine. I don't dishes. want to help them in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Kat, it's, it's like one of those things. If, if you're a chef, that's like, oh, your husband must probably think that you're the best cook and he doesn't have to ever cook. Or if, if your husband was a chef, it's like, oh, he probably cooks for you every day. <laughs> you know, it, mm -hmm. it ends up, then it, it's usually the opposite. <laughs> It's right, like, no. right. When it comes from work, he doesn't want to look at food. <laughs> right. It's the same thing with like, let's say somebody who's a house cleaner. They, you know, you think, oh, they're a house cleaner. Their house has got to be spotless. You know what I mean? And you're like, <laughs> the last thing I want to do is go home and clean my own <laughs> house. 
<laughs> right. So I'm yeah, done with I other people's understand. rubbish. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, I completely understand that. I um I know that's my friend, one of my best friend's brothers went to school to be a chef and he and for her graduation and uh college she he had made a fruit dish yeah. um but he made it out of a water he had a watermelon and he made yeah. a whale because she loves water oh, wow. he made a whale out of a watermelon he sculpted it and then That's he so made cool. a spout come out from the from, of the the watermelon of the whale now that was it was a whale now yeah. and on the top of that was all the fruit and it was just an amazing work of art that like everybody looked and went this is so good and he was he loved doing it you know he didn't do it often obviously but, you know cuz he he had to work doing this but he yeah. did this for her for her graduation and it was absolutely brilliant i mean this it, you can tell when you see chefs working like this and especially if you're doing this for somebody you love right yeah. you you can see how much love and caring and passion and you know talent is put into food yeah. it is absolutely amazing so um so you didn't become a chef no, no, I mean, I, different, but it's still in, in, the, in the art in that sense. So it was yeah, something yeah, different, though. It's still the arts. I didn't become a chef, thank goodness, because, because I don't think it, it, my restaurant would have lasted. <laughs> um, but if you are interested in becoming, you know, and it's not just, just a chef, the culinary arts aspect of it. If you are interested, then really take a look at some of the future jobs that we have all over the world for chefs. Culinary arts is really taking something and creating something beautiful out of it, but it also tastes good. My name is uh, Thomas Barnes. I'm a chef instructor here at IEP Academy of Culinary Arts. The industry is so vast. There's so many different options to go into. A lot of times there will be the prep cook, which is the person who comes in early and prepares products that take a long period of time to cook. Line cook is someone who's going to be preparing the food that's ordered. You have a chef de cuisine, who is someone's going to be in charge of that line, whether it's the hot line or the cold line. And then you have the sous chef, who's going to be in charge of kind of the day-to-day -day productions. The executive chef is someone who is considered the head chef of the kitchen. I always loved cooking growing up, and I loved working hands-on, so I just thought it was going to be the perfect fit for me. There's a lot of tiny little tricks that are in the profession. If you don't know a recipe that you never cooked before, if you have an idea of the ingredients and what you're doing with it, you will understand the process before you even go into it. You learn how to season food properly, how to sear food properly, so you know the fundamentals of building flavor profiles. Coming to culinary school, you should expect learning all your knife cuts. Sanitation and being clean and organized is like one of the biggest things here. You need to be very determined and very persistent. You're in the kitchen, so you need to think of what you're doing right now in that kitchen. It's really a matter of what you want to do. You can go to a family-owned restaurant, or you can go to a restaurant that has multiple venues and different places that you can go and work. You could go to a resort, a private club, and every single one of those facets of the industry are different in their own way. Personally, I've always been more on the creative side. I think that's another reason why I loved cooking so much. You get to be very experimental, and you get to try different things. It is very creative. The culinary arts industry is in high demand right now. It's becoming more of a manageable living wage that employees deserve and need now. When you plate your whole meal and it's nice and hot and it just looks beautiful, you place it perfectly, it's the most rewarding thing in the world. If you're truly passionate about food and cooking, this is the career for you. Awesome.
<laughs> oh my gosh. I think it's really people, good. And, and this is why I love doing what I do when it comes to being a, a streamcaster, right? And um, interviewing different people and then realizing different jobs, uh, different careers that are out there. Uh, because when we are in, in high school, and even just as you're about to graduate, you're not given a lot of options of so many different jobs that are out there, right? Sure. And of course, being a chef is not one of those on the list that they have of, of going out and really learning to do. You know, yeah. that's not something that that is on. I mean, obviously, and I am a part of um, um, STEM chapters where we take the girls out and we teach them of different jobs in STEM. And um, cook is not on there. Chef is not yeah. on there. And it bothers me because this is such a a rewarding career and it's it mixes everything when it has to do with steam the science yeah. the technology the engineering the math the art it brings it all together and i really wish um that we would express more interest in careers like this yeah was that not yeah. amazing that is. And I think, you know, even I was actually speaking to one of my, my co-workers at, at school and we actually want to incorporate something like a like a STEAM uh, event or something to, to launch something where they were looking at doing like um, cul culinary skills and, and like even woodworks you know, to do that because it's not in our school at all. Right. And, you know, the schools are so focused on sports and on academics in that sense where they tend to forget about the soul, you know, even mm -hmm. cooking and, and doing things with making things with your hands. It is so rewarding. It's, you know, it's like, you know, you're experimenting every day and then you end up with this beautiful result and you actually consume it. So I think it's, it's just so rewarding, like even like gardening or growing your own vegetables or herbs and um, you know using it in your cooking it's i mean that's and it's all natural and you know for, uh, well prepared and looked after by yourself it's i mean if, if i had to bring you some um tomatoes or something and, and say oh it's it's out of my garden or i bring you <laughs> lettuce or something it's like oh this is so cool you know it's, it makes it makes a huge difference yeah i in i i wish we and there's so many different avenues of of culinary arts and so many different, like we had seen um, in the culinary arts school, like you have the sous chef, you have yeah. a line cook, you have the executive chef, you have the prep cook, you know, you have so many different versions of, you know, of that job in that industry. Um, so, you know, honestly, you can be so many different work in so many different areas you have the like we said the sous chef who supervises the cooks and the every every day you know day-to-day mm -hmm. -day operations um and then of course you have the line cook who's in charge of preparing the food and setting up the necessary supplies just as they come in um and then of course you have the prep cook which handles the preparing of the ingredients for all the dishes and that are being served in the restaurant and you when we go to restaurants yeah all we do is we order, right? Yeah. Say, oh, this looks good. This picture looks great. Let's go ahead. I want to order that. In the background, on the other hand, there's a whole slew of things that are happening. And so many different people, like we just mentioned, the sous chef to the line cook to the prep cook and everything like that, that's in between. And really, we think, okay, wow, it came out so fast or, you know, it, it didn't take that long and it looks so beautiful. But then you have people like the prep cook who comes in at like 4 a.m. Yeah. to prep all that stuff so that you can have a delicious meal. Sure. That, that is intense. I know. It really is. And of course, we have, like Robert had said, when he, was, when he worked in the restaurant, he did. He was a dishwasher, you know, and he did that. My boys, they were bussers. Um, and so, you know, they, they and I actually... Believe this or not, Robert, my mm -hmm. one of my first jobs was a uh, a cook in a diner. Diner. Okay. Um, and I had to, and it was with my mother. My mother, um, it was my first job, um, and my mother was, you know, working. And she said, "Well, come on in, and and I'll I'll teach you how to do this." Now, my mother worked at this place in Las Vegas, Nevada, called Chin's Restaurant. It was a Chinese restaurant right there on Fremont Street, which was the casino area. And yeah. all the famous people like Mike Tyson and all the, you know, 
uh, Celine Dion, they would come to eat here. So and it, it was such a fabulous place. And mm -hmm. she cooked there. She was uh, uh, one of the um, head cooks. Um, and she did an amazing job. So um, when she went over to a small little diner as well to help out a small diner, she helped me uh, get the job there and, and taught me how to do some of that stuff. But it was so amazing because there were so many things involved. And I was like, I'm so confused. Wait, how is the egg supposed to be? <laughs> What does poach mean? <laughs> oh my word! Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, so it was. It was. It's a very rewarding career, but there's a lot to it, and I I think it's um underrated. It's a very underrated uh, career. Awesome. So. No, but I do love eating. <laughs> eating is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I I think so, and it's so funny because. Earlier on, there was a, uh, someone had posted, what is your most expensive hobby? Hmm. No lie. Somebody said eating. Oh, wow. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> eating is the most expensive hobby. And if you think about it, it is very true because if you're going to be cooking stuff, you have to buy all the ingredients. And then if you're going to be going out to eat, it's been very expensive lately, right? <laughs> <laughs> so oh wow this you know this hour has gone by so fast already yeah, <laughs> and i'm getting hungry so. <laughs> yes i'm also going to grab a cup of coffee soon so that's really cool but this this is really fun i think there's so much that you know that we can speak about culinary stuff and um you know just the whole science aspect of things like i mean there's so many things about like i know at, at one stage we also did a show about um like the preservation of of food instead mm -hmm. of just like freezing things or putting in the in the refrigerator right using salt or using syrup or using fat like lard to to preserve things preserve it. or the way of like how do they make meat jerky or mm -hmm. beef jerky like we we call it biltong where the the meat is like hung outside or in a room where it, it has to drain or even like pickling like meat it's, it's like if it's used with certain vinegars then you have something like the carpaccio where it's like thin slices of meat that they put that they actually cure in, mm -hmm. in in vinegar or how do they get a baked alaska to you know go into the oven but the ice cream doesn't melt it's it's really amazing it's so cool there's so much we can talk about there really is and there's so much more to the art and the science of cooking um, and culinary arts. There is a reason they call it culinary arts yeah. because it is a wonderful, wonderful job. If you are looking for um, you know, a future job, a uh, career, um, I would really highly recommend looking into this. If you enjoy art and science and making and experimenting, do not be afraid to experiment with food um, because the worst that could happen is that you, you know, don't like it or you get extremely sick but make sure you're make sure you're like you know reading the directions properly mm -hmm. cooking it um just just right um there are temperatures for each things make sure you read about that but i'd highly recommend going to even youtube looking this stuff up now um and learning how to cook and if you have anything in the future that you want to show us that you experimented with and as far as foods um, we are very excited to showcase that um, on some, you know, one of our future shows about how you were inspired by what we did here at Steam Talk, and you took it into your own hands to try and experiment in culinary arts. We'd love to see it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And also, if you want to be closer involved and, and chat to us personally, you can also join an awesome network right there, xpcrunch.network. And, um, you know, while you join now, it's, it's still free. <laughs> so you can still join mm -hmm. in. And basically anything regarding science, technology, engineering, arts, makers, gamification, and even everything that we do um, with XP Crunch with regards to the streaming side of things. So if you have any questions, you'll see our contact details on there where you can actually private message us also if there was anything that you enjoyed or appreciated or just want to catch up again or maybe join an awesome community of people. Yes. And remember, uh, like Robert had mentioned, it is free till the end of the year. And if you join now, it is free forever for you because by the time uh, end of the year starts in 2024, then there is going to be a fee. So I would join now so that you have a lifetime of free access to us. Here we go. Awesome. So. <laughs>
Um, so we are going to leave you um, with a very inspirational um, clip here. If you have ever gone to um, like a, um, you know, this with the Japanese, uh, uh, what are they called? The hibachi places mm -hmm. where they cook in front of you. Right. And you, they put right from the grill, they put it right onto your plate and it's nice and hot. If you've ever gone to one of those, those are my favorite. I'm actually going to be going to one tonight because it's my birthday this weekend. Oh, so my so boys cool. are going to take me out and I'm going to enjoy it. And uh, I could never do this. This is so such talent. But if you are interested, um, we're going to leave you with this inspiration to be a bahini chef. Everyone knows Benihana, tricks like flipping the spatula, tossing shrimp tails. It's kind of the original Japanese dinner theater here in the States. I'm here in the very first location in New York City, which opened back in 1964. Benihana has this program where one of their pro chefs gives people like me a crash course in what it is like to do their job. Pretty sure I'm gonna be a disaster, but I don't know. Maybe I'm a teppanyaki master. Let's see. I'm here with Chef David of Benihana. You? I'm good, I'm super excited. I'm already failing at being a Benihana <laughs> chef. You look like Benihana chef. Okay, wow, playing very the part. Nice. Great, yeah, great. Ready for this, so now you're ready I'm for super this. Super ready, very good. got my knife. What is the difference between hibachi and teppanyaki? The difference is because teppanyaki we call the flat grill. This is the teppanyaki, and hibachi is not the style. The style. So how long did it take you to train before you got the tricks down really well? Now we have a program, right, that's at three months, right, to be a Benihana chef. So we teach you how to cook over here at the flat grill, and I teach you the tricks too. Ooh, Ooh it's star, hot! Right? Look, Steaming it's already! This grill is very high, it's at like 450 degrees. This divide in three parts. This side, 450 degrees. This side is like a 200, and another side is like 100. Benihana, right, we use only salt, Sesame seed and pepper. So let's do it, start the tricks. This is it. Very easy trick, look. And. Ooh, okay. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Try okay, one more time. Okay. One, two, and. See, and the steam is coming oh, out. Oh, it's oh my volcano. God. Maybe you want to make a choo choo train? Why not? Choo choo! <laughs> Let's go make a shrimp. One, two. One. One. Two. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was nice. Shrimp tails out. All right, and then I'm gonna put this to the side. Oh my Ready? god! Look, one, two, and ah! top of my hat. Yeah, what? one, two. Did wow, did it work? nice. Did it work? Almost, almost, almost good. Let me, let me take it. Go. Oh. No. There. Did it, oh, did it work? almost no. good. Almost good. Very good. Pepper and salt. Yeah. Okay. Here. That I, this is this right. I can do. Little butter. Put the lemon like this, and we put. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Very good. Nice. Yeah. nice. And so then I put that in there. Yeah. Put the, sh the shrimp on the butter and lemon. I serve it to the customer. Okay, so now let's make rice. Far right, rice. rice, far rice. That's the best rice. part. About you it. see, I have the vegetables over here. Okay. This is onions, carrots, and scallions. Look, let me put a little oil over here. Okay. I put oil over oil. there, and I put only half of vegetables. Half rice. Half. This is the Benihana egg roll. <laughs> I got it. Benihana egg roll. You see? Rolling the eggs. <laughs> this is the. Ooh. Oh my God. Okay. Here, now you can take it. I, I take it? it. Yeah, one, two, and oh! <laughs> you did three times. It's good. Three times? Three times okay. is not bad, right? Do no, the it's very, very thing. easy. You see, one, two. Woo! Oh, so you cracked it in there. Mm. Oh. 
vegetables is already here. Just put it on the okay, top. Okay, put it in there. Here, put it in the top and mix it up. It's a garlic butter. Ooh, so garlic butter, fried one, rice. One spoon over here. Oh, sesame seeds, pepper. And the special seasoning. Oh my God. Ooh, <laughs> one, two, and look. Wow. What is that? Okay, looks like our guests are here. Hey guys. You like yeah. fried rice, guys? Yeah? Love because it. that's the best part. Everything was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Flipping the spatula, not as easy as it looks. So I'm probably not gonna be a teppanyaki master anytime soon, but David, an expert, totally great. I had a lot of fun, uh, but sorry to my friends who had to eat this meal. This is the best meal you're ever gonna have <laughs> in your oh, life. Cute. So you're welcome. <laughs> she amazing. cooked pretty good. Smells amazing. Wow, I like it. The fast learner. Great. Know how to Where serve those that? mushrooms? <laughs> Thanks for joining us. If you liked this, click here to watch more. And we want customers to really understand how to enjoy that flavor of our ramen.